I finished 75 hard and I'm here to tell you all about it. I've already recorded two videos. One was drinking a gallon of water a day for 30 days. The other one was the first half of the 75 day hard. In that first video about the halfway mark, I explained a couple things. One was where I was coming from. I have 15 years that I have tracked my fitness. Whether you look at it from a pounds perspective or a body fat perspective or an inches perspective, I know what my measurements have been for the last 15 years. At my lowest body weight, I was between 11 and 13% and did fitness competitions. That was back in 2005. I had suffered through a hysterectomy before that and I just really wanted to get my body back. So I've tracked where my body is from before 2005 through doing fitness competitions and being in the quote best shape or lowest body fat of my life. And then since then, and I have stayed the same weight, the same body fat, the same measurements, regardless of how you look at it for about 15 years until right around October of 2018, between October, 2018 and May of 2019, I put on 13 pounds. Nothing had changed in my life except that I was eight months older. My workouts were the same. My eating was the same. Nothing had changed that was different. And I know I had maintained my weight, body fat, and measurements for that 15 years prior. So not only did I not want that 13 pounds to stick around, but I couldn't figure out why it happened. From May of 2019 until now, I have been trying different things to drop 10 pounds. I do wanna say I'm coming from a place where I have no medical restrictions. I have no issues with eating disorders I never have in my past. I have nothing that would stop me from trying any sort of diet or fitness plan. I've stayed super active. And so I had no hesitation about trying ways to make this situation better. One thing that I did when I started 75 hard was I stopped all of my supplements and I went two weeks without any supplements at all. And I'm talking about vitamins and stuff like that. At the end of two weeks, I reevaluated every single supplement, what their benefit was, and if it was something I wanted to continue taking. One of the most interesting parts of this is that I was taking black cohosh for hot flashes and I would wake up one to four times every single night. The black cohosh got it down to one or two times a night and I felt fine, I felt good. But through this process, I have had no black cohosh and zero hot flashes. So total win to complete the 75 hard the way it's meant. If I miss any one of the items on the list, at any point, one time, you start over. I didn't do that. I decided that I was already discouraged about my fitness and my weight, and I really wanted to complete this and figure out where were the issues that I was having. I know that means I didn't complete it because I didn't go 75 days doing all five or six things and not missing a day, but I feel pretty damn good about what I did get accomplished. I was so drawn to 75 hard because it's actually a mental toughness it's not just about having a fitness program or a weight loss program. It's a mental toughness program. It added things in that were really important to me in my life. And so my goal wasn't 100% to just lose 10 pounds and get more fit. That was one side effect of the entire program. So let's get started. Number one, read 10 pages of a book every day. I have this great bookshelf. It's not huge. I also have a Kindle. I wanted to read, but I wasn't reading. Deciding I'm going to read 10 pages of a book a day that's in some sort of self-help type category made me just do it. I never miss a single day. I've read 10 pages of a book every single day, and I am almost, I almost finished 12 books. In the first half of 37 days, I had completed five and a half books, and I've hit, I just like barely, missed 12 books. What I love about this is that reading books has now become a habit, but also I remember how much I loved doing it. So I'm not concerned about continuing this on. I didn't hold myself to the 10 pages, except it was a minimum amount, but that was never an issue for me. So what I'm excited about here is that I did it. I did it every day, and it's something that I'll continue to do that I love. Number two, 
a progress photo every day. In my first video, I said that this was one of the hardest things for me and I'm gonna keep on with that. I do need to take after pictures of my front, the front of my body and the back of my body. I have been on camera every single day the last 75 days. I know that this is in large part so that you can see your progress and I think it's fantastic. I did complete it, I didn't do it with a lot of love. Number three, a gallon of water a day. Starting this off was really hard. For the first four days, I felt like I was completely drowning and I couldn't imagine wanting to drink a gallon a day. But in that first week, there's actually a shift. And I said this in my 30 day video and also my halfway video that now it's just second nature. I started out with a really inexpensive $2.50 from Walmart, not PABA free, not environmentally friendly, but it was $2.50. It was a half gallon plastic container. It worked great. I upgraded to my new one, which I love much better. But if I hadn't used that totally cheap, janky $2.50 half gallon, I wouldn't have known what I wanted to change about it. So that was good. I didn't miss a single day of this either. I drank a gallon of water a day every day for the last 75 days and I freaking love it. As a matter of fact, there have been days that I have had more and there have been a couple days where I'm getting ready to go to bed and I'm finishing it. But I got into a really sweet rhythm with this where if my first half gallon was gone between two and three, and then the second one was gone between seven and eight, and it's just kind of become second nature. There are so many benefits to drinking a gallon of water a day. This is one also I just want to keep going with. Number four, no alcohol. The interesting thing about this is that I know when I had my last drink because I was in San Antonio when my grandson was born. It was on January 6th. I had a beer at a taco restaurant. It was all very delicious. I got back from the San Antonio trip on January 7th and I'm not a huge drinker. So I started this challenge on January 20th and honestly, I hadn't had a drink already for a couple weeks. So for me, it's been three months since I've had a drink. This was not a hard one for me because like I said, I'm not a big drinker anyway. There were three different days in the last 75 days that I was like, man, I really want to drink. Other than that, it was pretty easy. Having said that, I cannot wait to have a drink. I'm gonna have a drink, I'm drinking. The next thing, two workouts a day, every day, 45 minutes each, and one has to be outside. In the first half of this, I missed two workouts in 37 days. Both of them, oddly enough, were my inside workouts. There was no reason that I missed it. One time I woke up in the morning, and I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't do my indoor workout yesterday. I was surprised about this because I started this January 20th. It gets into the teens here. We've had some really horrible weather. What I loved about this part of the challenge is that I could pick anything I wanted. So here's a great thing and a not so great thing. I picked things that needed to get done, which was walking the dog every single day, but I also chose things that weren't super difficult or challenging or intense. Not so great. On the second half of my 75 days, I actually had something happen. We all have excuses. On day 54, I got sick. It was one of those eat pizza at your sister-in-law's birthday party and it doesn't agree with you and you're doubled over for a couple days, that sort of sick. So I did not do an outdoor workout on three different occasions, three days in a row. I couldn't take that much time away from a toilet. There was one other time that I also missed a workout. So four times, three of them when I was sick, in this last 37 days, the second half of 75 hard, for a grand total of six times in 75 days. This is the thing that surprised me. Prior to 75 hard, I was working out three to five times a week. After starting 75 hard, you're doing two workouts a day. So it's, I went from three to five times a week to 12 to 14 times a week, which is part of why I was glad I got to choose something like walking my dog as my outside. Even though it's only two miles, I wasn't doing any massive impact there. I was working out nine to 11 times more a week than I was before this. I was actually concerned I'd get super tired, even though I didn't pick workouts that were really tough. 
I didn't get super tired, but I didn't have as many fitness changes as I was hoping to. I really thought that going from three to five to 14 a week, almost every single week for 75 days would make a difference even if they weren't super intense, but that wasn't the case. And finally, number six, choose a diet and don't cheat. I loved this one. I chose intermittent fasting. I did not cheat. In the beginning, I wanted to do five out of seven days. So on the weekends, because the schedule is so vastly different than during the week, if I needed to eat before my 16 hours, I could do that without feeling tremendously guilty. Also, I was running seven to 10 miles on Saturday morning and I was afraid about going too long there or feeling sick. I didn't really ever feel sick. There were only two times on the first half and one time on the second half that I didn't intermittent fast and it was on the weekend. So technically I followed that 100%, but there were three days out of 75 that I didn't intermittent fast. For intermittent fasting, I chose the 16-8 split. So I didn't eat for 16 hours and then I ate for eight hours, but I wanted a couple things to come out of this. One, I wanted to look at how much sugar I consume and how much processed foods. In my first half, I talked about how I was really pretty pleased with that. I, there's not a lot of processed food or a lot of sugar. I cook almost everything in our house. So that went really well. I did notice at day 37, when I did my halfway mark, I had lost no weight. So in the first five weeks, my weight was the same, my body fat was the same, and my inches were the same. And that was super discouraging. Between increasing my workout and really being more conscious of my diet and drinking a gallon of water a day, I thought for sure I would drop that 10 pounds. So here we are, another almost five weeks in, 37 more days has passed, an entire 75, and I weighed myself and again, no changes. I did do something different, and this is where it gets even more frustrating for me. I decided after the halfway mark, because I was discouraged, that I would start tracking everything I ate. I used my fitness pal, which I've used many times in the past. If anyone's looking for an app to track your food and exercise, I love this one. I have used the app for almost exactly five weeks. At the end of every day, when you complete the entry, it gives you a message. You put your goals in, you've set what you wanna do, you have your calories, everything's figured out. Every day you push the complete entry button and it gives you a message. If every day was like this, you would weigh X, Y, Z, in five weeks. So it's always, if every day was like this, you'd weigh this much in five weeks. Every single day for five weeks, that message said that I would lose eight pounds, minimum to 16 pounds, which is more than I actually want to lose. So here's what I find frustrating about this. For 75 days, I have been doing a gallon of water. I've had no alcohol, so no extra calories from alcohol. I've done intermittent fasting. I've only missed three days in a total of 75, and they were on the weekend when I was running. And I've tracked my food for almost five weeks. But the scale hasn't budged. In wrapping up the challenge, what I had to remind myself is that this is a mental toughness program. I did this as a side benefit to lose the weight that I had put on and to get in better shape. That was a huge goal of mine, but there were a lot of other things that I gained from doing this. First of all, I did gain mental toughness. I understand I didn't do the program exactly like it's designed, but I'm now reading at least 10 pages of book a day. I'm drinking a gallon of water. I haven't had alcohol in three months and there were only a couple times I wanted it. I've really honed in the diet in the house. I increased workouts. I've spent a lot more time outside. Another thing that made this difficult, and I'm not making excuses, on day 47 of this challenge is when Corona hit and things started to get locked down. Fortunately, in Reno where I'm at, I can still go out for a walk every day. We're not a shelter in place city. So I didn't have to stop anything that I was doing. It definitely shifted how the stress level was in our environment as a whole and how I had to treat being outside walking the dog. It did add another level to the mental toughness portion of this program, just because that was something really extraordinary that's happening in the country right now. One side thing this did is that it really made me evaluate a lot of things. What was going into my mouth, how often I wanted to drink alcohol that I would have in another circumstance, how much sugar we allow in, what all my supplements were, and if they were the right ones for me, and if they were working for me. It did help me push outside of my comfort zone to be outside in weather that I did not want to be outside in. It pushed me to do more with working out and to be more accountable. It got me reading a lot, and it reminded me that we're very hard on ourselves. I am my own worst critic, that I should probably be a little more gentle in some ways, but it was totally worth it. 
Would I do it again? Not right now. Right now, I want a margarita. Thanks for watching and have an awesome day.